like a circle in a spiral, like a wheel within a wheel, never ending or beginning, like the circles that you find in the windmills of your Welcome back, everyone, to the Stogie Geek Show. This segment is sponsored by Debonair Cigars. Visit stogiegeeks.com forward slash debonair for a list of retailers. We've got the Debonair Ideal segment coming up. And Matt, I feel that you didn't smoke a Debonair cigar. I know you watched the commercial. I know. And now you really want to smoke a Debonair I, cigar. It, it, no, my wife wants to smoke a Debonair yeah, cigar. Exactly. Come on, are you kidding me? She would me? probably really like them, too. She would. Your wife will enjoy cigars. She We've does. actually all shared yeah. cigars before. The person whom you're trying to reach oh. is currently unavailable. Uh-oh. Are we trying to reach Will on Skype? Is that what did he drop off? Okay, so Matt and I will just fill time. Uh, so the reason you didn't smoke any Debonair cigars is because I smoked them all. <laughs> oh, great! <laughs> when I now when I, I buy them, when I buy them, I tend to just smoke them like they're they're that good. And Phil Zangi, who is the man behind Debonair cigars, is literally the world's most interesting man. Like literally, like his family is the one who created Indian motorcycle. Mm. And um, right, has since actually sold that, and he's got some interesting news there. But um, he also owned Indian Tobacco, which was popular kind of way back in the day, um, and, and kind of moved on from that, and had the trademarks for Debonair cigars, and released this Debonair cigar, and it's a kind of a higher price tag. It very much lives up to his name, like very debonair, right? right? Debonair, like a little James Bondish kind of. But yeah. dude, when I smoked it, I'm like. Holy crap. So you like kept it lives going. Up, yeah, it lives up to his name. So he didn't save me any. No, so I just keep smoking him, dude. And every time I go to our other sponsor down the road, Mr. Jason want a smoke shop, and like I'll buy some, and they instantly disappear. <laughs> it's amazing because there's always a time to smoke Debonair. So Debonair, Black Hat, Vegas. Yes, I will bring some Debonair and my cigars. Wife. So uh, anybody who saw the picture of my wife smoking a cigar, she, we took a couple pictures of her. They're when, on we're her the Facebook last, page. Yeah, oh, yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. My wife likes to smoke a cigar. Not very often, but I saw that commercial and I'm like, that could be my wife. Absolutely. You, yeah. we'll, give you, yeah, we'll give you the link to yeah, the YouTube gotta, video. We've got to figure that out. Yeah. Yeah. She's going to want one of those yeah, Debonair she is. cigars. She's going to be like, when are you getting me one of those? Yeah. <laughs> they're, 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 just, they're awesome. He actually makes them now in a natural Maduro. I still tend to favor the natural, which he came out with first. In fact, I, I do have some. I bought a box of these salamon size cigars. They're gigantic, dude. I mean, like nine by you know 58 at its largest ring gauge. They're awesome. Um, and it's like from one of the original runs. So I only bring those out like, you know, when I've got a lot of time to smoke a cigar. We wouldn't be able to fit it a cigar uh, like that size into our day today no, with the amount of cigars not. that we smoked. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we had to get a little variety today. Yeah. But a Black Hat event. A Black Hat up event. Up, you know, I had on, them at on, the last Black Hat event. Did you? I did. I brought some of them with me. Oh, see, so you didn't and educate me. I don't know if your then. wife smoked one of those or not. I don't think Maybe, so. I, they were no, small. She was smoking I brought the smaller whatever. one. No, she was smoking whatever. Okay. I was sm- she it's just took my cigar and started smoking it. They so. make um, uh, the Seguita might have been. It's kind of like a Petit Lancero. Great cigar. And he makes an even smaller one called the First Degree, which I, I smoked the last one on my humidor this week. They're, 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 they're good. And Phil's an awesome guy. He was on the, the last show, the previous one. He's just, again, the world's most interesting man. You, He's awesome. It, it would be fun to like pull him into... Like a black hat event, we should have like him, fly him fly out him for out our party. And, yeah, yeah. Like, it I'm would be pretty you, cool. Everyone would love Phil because everybody yeah. would get a great education <laughs> as part of the whole yeah. ambiance of that event. He's very passionate about his cigars. He's also very passionate about enabling his employees in the organization. Like same push like we have with Tenable to like hire people. Like he's very passionate about including all his cigars, uh, people in the making of his cigars from the blenders, all the people that work in the factory. Like it's really cool when he comes on the show and, and talks about all the things awesome. he's doing. So yeah. yeah. Will, are you back? I'm back. I was just filling Matt in about how Phil Zangi is the world's most interesting man. Yeah, he, he really is. Um, See, no hesitation. He was like, yeah. yes. Like, he, right on cue. Uh, I mean, when it comes to tobacco, they, he's got a nickname, the Alchemist, and he really is. He understands mm. the science behind tobacco uh, from seed to the store. Guy's, guy's incredible. I mean, he's been a great partner to us. 
I told Matt that uh, we didn't smoke any debonair today because I already smoked them all from that guy here. You know, yes. I found a Salomon, by the way. Yeah, uh, we were talking was, about the Salomon, yeah. I have, I found one in my house. <laughs> nice. I have one left, yep. So, Will, what's the uh, the debonair ideal for this evening? Oh, okay. We're, we're, um, so, this one's basically interacting with your local cigar representative. Um, so, you know, if you go into a cigar store... Um, a lot of times uh, you'll run into a representative from a, a brand or manufacturer. Um, sometimes it will be the brand owner. Maybe it will be a Phil mm-hmm. Zangi, But other yeah. times it will be, you know, someone from the sales or the marketing team that's, that's in there. And usually they're in there to see your local retailer, uh, meet some customers. Maybe they're in there for an event right now. Um, you know, these guys, I think, they're, you know, that's one thing that's kind of really unique about, I think, these cigar um, reps, even though the the end consumer Uh-oh. retailer, yep. there's still this piece where they interact with the customer. So, you know, we have a lot come into to our local shops down here, and I, I kind of thought there's some interesting ways that you could be very debonair in terms of of, of meeting your local representative. Um, you know, the first one I'll say right off the bat: don't ask them for a free cigar. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, um, you know, let if if they're gonna give out a free cigar, um, they're gonna give you give one. It out. Yeah, they'll give one. But the, um, you know, and I guess well, we're kind of in a unique position because we have the show and we review cigars. And the times that I will do that will will be if the local shop doesn't have it available for purchase, I'll ask them. Hey, I've been. I heard about this cigar that you're about to release, and it's not here yet. Do you have any for me to sample? And the only reason I'm asking for that is because I legit want to smoke it to review it on the show and share my opinion about it. And the cigar reps, speaking about being debonair, right, are very debonair about that. If they have it, they'll be like, "Yes, Paul, I would. I, I do want to give you one because you, know, you guys can review cigars. You go on the show every week and you talk about them, and that's really cool. But don't." You know, like Will said, go the other way and kind of ask for free cigars. The other thing, well, and I'm sure you're going here too, is when the local cigar rep hands you a cigar and says, hey, here's a cigar, graciously accept that cigar, and if time permitting or whatever, smoke that cigar right there. And, and show them the appreciation. And, and also, as we've talked about on the show in the past, give them your honest opinion of that cigar and be debonair about it. It, it kind of, I'm sure you were going there, Will, because our previous yeah. conversations, you know, you were on the same page as to how you handle those kind of right. situations. Right, right, and absolutely. Um, you know, and I'll say this too, you know, and this is not a problem with most of the cigar reps, but I do believe I have seen sometimes cigar reps go into a store and, and um, they, you know, they're, they're a little selective on who they give the cigars to. And I think if yeah. any cigar reps are, are listening to that, I think the debonair thing is easy to give to everybody. Or give to nobody is what I would recommend on that. Right. Um, um, you know, but I have seen that. It's a, it's very few, but there are, there are some that go on with that as well. I, I I always stay positive with cigar reps too, and I always recommend or talk about cigars that I like from that manufacturer. Whoever the manufacturer is, I always tell them what they're doing right. First, you know, I guess it's kind of like a social engineering, you know, kind of thing, or sales kind of thing. But I'm always, you know, like. Hey, you represent XYZ Cigar Manufacturer. I really love that cigar that you produce. And, and have some honest feedback for them. I, I, most cigar manufacturers, I can find that one cigar that I do really like. And I try and tell them, like, that, that's, that's a really good cigar. Like, you guys did a great job with that cigar. And, and I kind of encourage them, too. And if they ask, hey, what did you think of that cigar? I always give my honest opinion. And I, they appreciate that very much. Nah, I wasn't a big fan of that one. Or hey, that was that was a really great cigar. Or whether it falls somewhere in between, I'm always very honest with the cigar reps too. And I think that being honest like that has one of the things that's really led to um, building those great relationships with the local cigar reps because all of the ones here locally, every single one of them are just they're so awesome. They're yeah. awesome people to interact with uh, and talk about cigars and. You know, I'll ask them what other cigars they like to smoke, or you, know, you develop. Uh, elite, in, we're in a unique position, Will, like I said, where we kind of run the show and um, we tend to build relationships, I think, with the local cigar representatives because we're kind of we're in the industry with them. Um, yep. But they're great people to just talk with about cigars and, you know, ask them about what's coming up or, 
hey, I smoked that, and whether I liked it or not, like, what was the story behind that blend? Who were you, you know, what market were you going after? What tobaccos are in it? I, all the sales reps that I've talked with, they, they know their products, right? And it's a great way to get product knowledge. So if, even if you go to them and say, hey, you know, I, I did, I smoked that line, and I, I wasn't a big fan. I like something that is X, Y, Z. You know, what else do you have in that other profile? They may say, well, you know, maybe that's not your profile, but, but try this other one that maybe you haven't tried yet, and that may be more within your flavor profile. So I think it's a great opportunity to have that kind of debonair conversation and be like, you know, this is, this is what I like to smoke, and they may have something in that, uh, in that line. So, Especially for yes. us, you know, amateurs, yep. right? We don't smoke them every single day. Yeah, so, tell them what your palate is. Tell them you know, what kind we, of, I, you I, say, hey, I like this kind I of like scotch. I like a robust, like, yeah, I like something a little. I like this size. Yeah, yeah. right. Exactly. Right. Have that conversation. Right. It, it is, you know, a lot of people ask me, well, what, you know, I want to get into cigar blogging. I want to get into cigar media. What do I need to do? And there's a few things I'll tell them. I'll always tell them, start to learn your local cigar rep, reps. Get to know them. Um, we have a lot of great guests on the show. We're very fortunate. And let me tell you, the relationships started. It's not that I picked up the phone and um, I called uh, Pete Johnson. You know, I got to know Pete Johnson through my local representatives. You know, mm-hmm. these are types of things that uh, you just, you know, and as they get to know you, they'll talk about you. Um, and it's, you know, you just, so it's a really, they're really the hands on the ground in your territory. So that's the advice I give to people a lot with that. Yeah, I think the the overarching advice is when you're in a cigar shop and there's a representative there from a cigar manufacturer, engage them in conversation. Yep. That's no, the it, best advice I could give. Yeah, and, the, and, don't, the, and like you said, well, don't lead them with I want free cigars. Just engage them in conversation, dude. I mean, if, they're, if their product is good, you're going to give the local cigar retailer money in exchange for that person's product, right? That's how I always look at it. I'm not looking for free cigars. I want to engage you in conversation to maybe understand why I might want to purchase one of those cigars and learn about your products. And then that's a perfect opportunity to do so. And that's our job is to be personable and have that conversation with customers. And just as a side note too, a lot of people may not notice, uh, but um, in certain states, a cigar representative is only allowed to carry X number of cigars on them for tax purposes. And I mean, they I've heard stories of uh, and I think Georgia is one of those states. I've heard stories where basically, uh, you know, tax agents have have, you know, find confiscated or find find these people for having more than X number of cigars. So they may have, you know, in certain states. And I, and I know I believe Georgia is one of them, but I know there's others. They only can carry so much, and they may need that for what they're doing for that particular day. So, you know, you need to be a little sensitive sometimes to that, too. Yep. Yeah, and I guess the last thing, you know, whatever your cigar representative gives you, make sure you smoke it and give them feedback. Even if it's not yeah. right there, make sure you give them the feedback, good or bad. Yeah, most of them will email you, and, and you know, they'll give you your email. They're very accessible. You can text them, um, you know, so – it, it's like I said, and, and you know the hard thing is when you lose the good reps. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, that's yeah, the best I know. Thing. I love all yeah. the reps here in Rhode Island. They're awesome. I, I love I having. Like I love something. having a cigar with the local cigar reps. They're all. They're all so yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I know Derek from EPC, and I got yeah, to know Derek's him for our guys. local rep here in Rhode yep. Island for EPC. Yep. And when he, he came out of Charlotte actually once, and it was just great. Yeah, and there's so many. There's so many others, right? And a lot of them have been on the show. A lot of them will be doing oh, an so event was, next door at the Vanna Club, yeah. or they'll be doing an event from Mr. J's, which we'll go cover, and we'll interview them and talk with them, and it's just, it's, it's really great. I mean, you know, one of the ones that sticks yeah. out of my mind is Nat Sherman. That was, you know, to meet Mike Harkalots, and, you know, it's just great. Um, it's a great sharing of this, the love of cigars with your local cigar rep, so. And, and there are some characters out there, There too, are, so yeah. <laughs> so yeah. There really are. Um, yeah, I met, uh, yeah, so I mean, I met, I've met a few of them, but they're all, like I said, that's in a good way I'm saying that. Absolutely. Um, but it, yeah. Cool. So, Will, you wanted to uh, start us off with our Stogies of the Week. And before we well, do that, we wanted to yep. read the uh, M. Bobe Cigars, relatively yep. new sponsor to here at the Stogie Geeks. Uh, this segment is brought to you by M. Bobe Cigars. Uh, represents the most admired cigar culture of Cuba from selecting the best of the best quality of different tobaccos used uh, for the aging process of the cigars are taken in consideration. M. Bombay cigars are the rolled in Costa Rica by some of the most experienced cigar rollers, giving it a unique smoking experience. The band of their cigars portrays the most detailed and artistic nature of the small cigar industry. Try the newly released M. Bombay Casera and the M. Bombay Mora, 
with M Bombay cigars, where the cigar is a way of life. And, and well, you smoked one of these this week. Which one did yeah. you smoke? I smoked the Casera. Hey, mm. Chris, are you able to put up the photos of that? Oh, nice. Yeah, we're going to put the, the photos okay. up that, that Will smoked. Yeah, go ahead. We'll start talking about it, and we'll get that up on the okay. screen. Okay, so or not. Is, one, oh. is one of the newer lines that was introduced. Uh, I actually smoked one on the show when, when they first signed on, and I, I was actually very impressed with it. But, you know, when you're smoking it on the show, it's hard to kind of – really pinpoint what, where that cigar was going. But I remember it just made a favorable impression on it. Now, the Casera comes in three sizes. I smoked a Toro. And um, the Toro has a, a shagged foot, which is about an almost an inch long. Nice. Uh, I love now, the shagged foot. I do too, but if sometimes I've had hit or miss experiences with, with shagged foots. Um, you know, there's certain cigars where it's worked great, and there's other cigars I'm like, now the shagged just, foot on that. Well, we got the picture up now. You you've already lit it in this picture. Is the shagged foot the the binder and filler that just hangs off the end? Um. So there's a couple pictures actually. There's one I think of the full cigar unlit. Okay. Yeah. We we don't have that one up yet, but the one with, okay. was already lit. So is yeah, the so shagged foot more problems. wrapper or is it? Because sometimes a uh, a closed foot will just be the wrapper, but then the shaggy foot will be the filler binder hanging off the end. Yeah, it's the filler and the binder hanging off. Nice. It's a it's a it's a rough cut at the end. Um, the one thing, and I'll talk about the blend in a second. So the one thing that was just blew me away is is that shagged foot. Okay, so I lit that thing, and first of all, it gave me no problem. It like there was no signs of pulse syndrome. Mm, I have bad yeah, luck with shagged foot cigars. I, I have very bad luck with them, and if they just don't burn right at the beginning, it, it's just a fight. Now, I've smoked through a few of these, and these burns were perfect, and that's what I kind of was trying to show in the pictures, is that they just burn. The transition from the rough cut to the, to the main part of the cigar was just, was just seamless. I love uh, that. And there was flavor out of that mm -hmm. shag foot. Um, really? The, yeah. They, so... Let me talk about the blend because I think that plays a bit into this cigar. Um, it's a Ecuadorian Connecticut Desflorado, which is is a um, I've seen a it's a variant of a Connecticut shade. I've seen some manufacturers use it. I think it's it's just a different variant. Is I'm not sure if it's a different seed, but um, it's a, called a Desflorado. It's it's a little darker than a Connecticut shade. It's got an Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, and then it's got Dominican and Peruvian filler. Um, Part of why I've been I've been a little bit on this Peruvian tobacco kick lately, and I think Peruvian tobacco is a flavor you're either gonna like it or you're not. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually, I you know I didn't I liked it on the Fratello when it's kind of mixed in with some other tobaccos. I didn't like it when it was on that Lancero where it was by itself. But it it kind of has, and I noticed Davidoff works with Peruvian filler a lot of times. This cigar had a little bit of that Davidoff herbal, grassy quality to it. And I think it was coming from the Peruvian tobacco. Hmm. But this cigar just changed, changes up so much. As you're burning through that, that shag foot, it actually gets a little creamy, which mm. I was shocked. On, on a, you know, without a wrapper, it's, it's kind of smoking smooth. And then that creamy, you start to get more flavors. There's cedar, there's natural tobacco, there's some grass, there's a little bit of a fruit note, and there's a little bit of a vanilla note that come in there. Um, but like I said, the grassy notes had almost this like evergreen herbal flavor, and, and it was like, man, that's got to that was it was reminding me a lot of the Fratello in terms of what yeah, that delivered. Yeah. But there were other flavors. Like I didn't like it on the Lancero because there wasn't a lot going on with this. There's a lot going on with this cigar. Um, so I, I actually thought this was a really good cigar. I'm gonna say it's a cigar. I think um, if you've smoked a lot of Davidoffs and like Davidoffs, I think you're gonna like this cigar. Nice. I think that's so I like it. I think you will. Um, I think you will. Um, I, uh, it's not a powerhouse. It's going to be very mild at the beginning, in fact, um, especially when you go to that check. But, but then it will hit about medium. I've talked to Mel Shaw, who's the owner of Mbappe. We'll get him on. Um, it's not an over – his cigars are not meant to be over the top with strains. Um, $16 cigar. It is, it is more of a premium offering. They have other offerings in the line. But um, – it was a box worthy cigar. I really nice. enjoyed the cigar a lot. So I have some coming up your way. I've been saying that. I know. So they, they do that with the shaggy foot, 
right, Matt? So yeah. when they don't put the wrapper on the last part of that foot, so you actually get to taste the different components individually. And that's what I like about the shaggy foot or even a closed foot, right? So a shaggy yeah. foot, there's no wrapper. So you're tasting just the filler and the binder too, Will? Do they put the binder? Yeah, I should say, yeah it's more of an unfinished foot, I like to call it. Yeah. Because it's got the binder. Um, what's good about, like I said, what's good about this is there's flavor on that, you know? So it's showing that, yeah, the wrapper contributes, but those other tobaccos are contributing to this, this right. profile, too. So you kind of get to separate it, right? It's yeah. kind of like when you make a cocktail. If you taste a little bit of the bourbon and a little bit of the whatever else you're putting in it individually, you get to do that with a cigar. Right. It's, it's kind of yeah, cool. Yeah. Instead and of then, having it all mixed together. And, and then when you get to the yeah. wrapper and the burn, you get to taste it all together. Yeah. The same thing when they do a closed foot. The wrapper will come off the end. So you get to taste just the wrapper when you first light it up, and then you get the full you get the, the full flavor. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think that's pretty cool. Yep. Well, I smoked one that you haven't smoked, which doesn't often happen. Um, <laughs> uh, and, and actually, Matt and I both smoked this cigar today. And yeah, this was on, a, uh, yeah, it was on a recommendation from Todd, who just got back from the Dominican Republic. Um, he was visiting the La Aurora factory in the Dominican Republic. He did a trip next door uh, with the Havana Cigar Club. And uh, brought in these cigars, I think, based on some of his experiences on his trip. And this was the Leon Jimenez Prestige. We smoked the Corona size today. I've actually got, uh, this is the, the tube that it comes in. If I can hold that um, up for the camera. So it comes in a tubo. This was one of the tubos that we smoked today. I didn't today. know that either. I didn't yeah. know it came from tube either. Leon Jimenez Prestige. I wish I had more information about it. Uh, I don't. Other than it's a very mild cigar. It's meant to be kind of a morning kind of smoke. It was a breakfast smoke. It was definitely a breakfast it was smoke, a right? Breakfast smoke, yeah. It, but it was mild in strength. But I got lots of flavor from it. It was. It was very flavorful. Um, you know, we had it with our breakfast uh, subs this a morning. Breakfast, kind of, yeah, the yeah, ridiculous so breakfast it, subs. Very mild, days. great way to start the day. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it went very well with coffee. We had a little uh, espresso this morning as well. Yeah. And uh, it was just awesome, Will. I, you know, I think the flavors with a little bit of age are going to kind of meld together a little better. Um, I thought the flavors were good. I could definitely taste hints of some aging potential in this cigar. Um, Todd really likes this cigar, and we tend to kind of disagree on cigar flavors. I think we kind of agree on this one. Um, he's rating it a, a – Todd's rating is a box-worthy um, which kind of comes in line with my recommendation, which is very rare for Todd and I to agree in the cigar. But I thought for a, a mild and strength cigar to have that much flavor, it was box worthy for me. And Will, you and I both know I smoke a lot of cigars in the morning, and, and this one was off the charts on the flavor component in terms of really mild cigars. Yeah, and I just pulled up actually Cigar Inspector, who actually had a review of a, of a different size. It's a Corojo, it's a Dominican Corojo wrapper on that thing, which surprised me. Yeah, uh, and over, it doesn't yeah, hit yeah. you with a lot of spice. I found it to be very smooth, Matt. It didn't yeah. like it was extremely smooth. Yeah. You know, to go to a, a a pretty rich cigar that early in the morning, I wouldn't have a voice left now. And, yeah, and yeah, obviously exactly. I still have my voice left. So, <laughs> right, right. Uh, obviously the transition for the day was good, yeah. but uh very, very mild, not very strong, good flavor. Like I said, very good early you know, before kind of lunch yes. uh, cigar. So it, I, I enjoyed it a lot. And even in the Corona size, and sometimes the Corona size, that smaller size can kind of be more potent. A little more harsh. Yeah. Yeah, it, a little can, harsher. And give yeah, you a lot more flavor than you're expecting. Yeah. But th this one hit the mark. So, well, I, I know you, um, you don't get a lot of La Aurora availability where you are. So maybe we'll have to send you some of these. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, for sure. Yeah. You need yeah, to try need this one, dude. Yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to uh, actually. I, I had heard of this, but I had not smoked it. And it may just be an availability thing. But I think this is more limited in terms of what they make. Yeah, probably. Yeah, it, The packaging definitely uh, speaks to that. I did also buy it uh, one in the uh, Robusto size and one in the Churchill size. You can see on the camera there. They all come in tubos, uh, which makes them a little pricier, but... I tell you what, it, it you know it lives up to to the name uh, in the quality that La Aurora is producing. So, yeah, and that looks like a delicate wrapper. So, I mean, the tubo could actually do a lot good having to, it in to the protect tubo. it. Yeah, yeah. I noticed yeah. that with some other wrappers that are delicate in my humidor, yeah. keeping them in the trays, those wrappers tend to crack, especially in the winter when your humidor might be a little drier than normal. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Back to you, Will. Um, I've smoked. This is a cigar I've kind of been smoking for a little bit of uh, time. I haven't reviewed it till recently. And I haven't talked about it in the show till today. Uh, it's it's um, a new release by uh, the Cohiba brand of General, and it's called the Cohiba Nicaragua. Um, this cigar is it's it's not a Nicaraguan puro. Is the first thing you got to know about this, but it's it's the first Cohiba they're not making in the Dominican Republic or Cuba. <laughs> so hmm. um, now. There's a lot of stuff going on in the news about the future of the Cohiba name. I don't. A lot of people ask me. I don't know what's going to happen to it. But obviously, uh, Cuba Tobacco had a big victory in court, or I can, they had a big. The Supreme Court denied uh, an appeal by General, so they're going to own the trademark in the U.S. Wait, that so being Cuba, said, who, Cohiba, the American company General Cigar, is going to own the trademark in the U.S.? The other one, the Cuban one. There's so the there Cuban. A, so Habanos S.A. Yeah, is going to own the trademark in the U.S. for the Cohiba brand. Right, right. There was a question. Basically, what happened is General went and filed a trademark in the U.S. for the Cohiba for Cohiba a long um, time this, ago, right? Long time ago. Yeah, and then it was challenged by Cuba Tobacco, which is who's the, the parent company of Habanos. Like it, years uh, later, the year. Years I mean, later, we're talking oh, is, 15, 20 years, right? Yeah, and this has gone through several battles in court right now. Um, and the courts have basically, there was a general one around, and then it went to the Court of Appeals, and then Habanos won around, and then there was a, a motion by general to have it he heard by the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court said no. Wow. So, and it was all over the grounds on who has the right to use that trademark in the U.S. Which is interesting because it involves the uh, Cuban-based company. Right. And there's which, the embargo. Yeah, which it's, has been under embargo for a long for time. For a long time. Right. So, yeah, it's, it, I think it's one of the more fascinating trademark cases. It, it, it's, you know, when, when Cohiba is probably, it is the most well known. Um, I agree. Yeah. Cuban. In fact, I just heard, uh, you know, Dave Garofalo um, from Cigar Authority just went to Cuba and he was talking about basically on the streets. All they tried to sell them was Cohiba. Mm -hmm. So and it's the most counterfeited one as well. It's it's like the Microsoft of cigars, right? Yeah, it's it really the most is. Yep. Yeah. yep. 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 But they came out with a Cohiba in Nicaragua. Um mm -hmm. and I heard a lot of people come out of the trade show saying this cigar was great. Um and so I you know, I actually I gave it an early try and I wasn't impressed with it. I thought it was young for the most part. But like I mentioned, it's not a Cohib it's not a Puro, so it's got a Honduran uh, Honduran wrapper, Sungaran wrapper over uh, Nicaraguan binder and filler, um, but it's made in Nicaragua. That's really the big mm -hmm. difference. Is they never made a Cohiba outside the DR or, or Cuba before. Um, I actually smoked a Robusto size, which normally comes in tubos. So we were just talking about tubos. These come in nice crystal glass tubos. Um, it's it's a 1299 cigar. Now, a little pricier than normal, but you may, compared to other Cohibas, it's actually cheaper. So it's not an expensive one. Um, but like I said, this cigar was just not doing it for me. Uh, hmm. And I got a few of them, I, and I finally just put them in my humidor, and then I revisited them when I got back from Vegas. Um, and I really found what everyone was saying about the cigar. It, Whatever it is, it needs some time in between when it arrives at the retailer. It needs some time, you know, from the – I just think when they shipped early, they just aren't – they don't smoke good. Um, but, you know, once they're out there, it's good. It's got a real neat uh, – has almost an apricot type of sweetness that comes off this cigar, uh, but it has plenty of tobacco flavor. Um, I thought it was a really good cigar. Um, in that – when it reaches its potential, which I'd say I smoked it, it's box split, but it may take some time to get to that box split, so you may have to just be patient with it. Mm-hmm. Have you smoked this one yet? I haven't. No. All right, I gotta remember to get you one. I'm curious to see what your thoughts are on it. But it's it's a good it's a good it's a good cigar. But I would not. You you're just gonna have to play. The longer you wait, I think the better. I smoked um, like one of the longest named cigars I think in existence. That's the Abe Flores 1975 Siri Pravada Capa Maduro Edition Especial. Is that, did I get that right, Will? Uh, yeah, 
Jeez. I smoked that, it. it. Yeah. That's okay. So you smoked the Maduro. I smoked Camper the Maduro. Park. Yeah. It, the, and, the, and the Sun Grown got the rating in C, CA. The, yeah, the Sun Grown got the Cigar Aficionado. Right. It was in the top 10 or top 15, top, I think. Yeah, it was top 10. Top yeah. 10 in Cigar Aficionados. Very high rankings for the, the Sun Grown wrapper. The Maduro wrapper, you said you like this better, Will. And when I talked to uh, some folks at Corona Cigar where I bought this this particular stick, they like the Maduro better. I'm in the Sun Grown camp. I think Cigar yeah. Aficionado got it right. I like the Sun Grown way better. Interesting. The Maduro was good. I, I would definitely give it like a fiver rating, but um, uh, it didn't have the amount of flavor that I got from the Sun Grown. It was it was good. I mean, it was smooth, and and I would definitely you know fiver's not you know, not a bad rating by any stretch. Oh, it's, it's a great rating actually. Um, but the Sun Grown, I, I guess I was comparing it to the Sun Grown the entire time. It doesn't have those like deep, dark, like really bold Maduro flavors. It's kind of like an amped down Maduro, but I, I greatly enjoyed the, the Sun Grown way better than this one. Way better. I, I have to th- give the Sun Grown another. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go back and revisit the Sun Yeah, Grown. dude, the Sun Grown for me, Cigar Fish, you know, I got that right. That, that stick is box worthy. Maybe even Chuck Norris. I mean, that, that Sun Grown is awesome. Awesome cigar. Uh, and I just didn't see that level in the, in the Maduro. So, and I smoked one of each. Because they're hard to find, because they got the rating of Cigar Aficionado, and that makes them extremely difficult to yeah, find, right. um, especially the Sun Grown. But I, I'm going to go back and seek out more of those Sun Grown. That's one that's going to go on my personal list, and, and I want a box of those. Seriously. Yeah, I'm going to. I actually do have. I actually picked up a couple of these in, um, when I was down in Florida. So I have. I have in, in the Robusto, so I yeah. will give those smoke. It's a big do, Florida I, stick, apparently. Ape Flores is pretty big in Florida. Yeah, I mean Abe. Abe actually, um, he's big in the Carolinas. Um, it's just um, the shops I go. He's in the shops he's in in Carolina are a little further from my house. Mm. Um, so I just, they're not ones I normally get to. But he he does have a presence in the the southeast. I'd say he's got a very good presence in. Nice. Back to you, Will. Um, I smoked a cigar from our friends at. Uh, actually, I got this one from our friends at Blind Man's Puff. Um, so I'm going through their reviews and actually this is the one that they just posted the cigar for. Um, it is cool. It, it, it's a cigar. Probably a lot of people haven't heard of. I had heard of it. I've smoked it. It's by a company called Cordoba y Morales. Um, mm-hmm. it's called the Clave Cubana et, 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 et Blanca. Boy, so you talk about a long name. Uh, I'm just going to call it the Clave. Okay. Um, and it was a box press Maduro when I got this thing. Um, I looked at this cigar, and I have a picture. I don't think I put the pictures to Chris, but I had it in my head this was another cigar from the very beginning, mm-hmm. and I, I, I couldn't have been more wrong on what the cigar was. I'm not going to say who the cigar was because it may play into this, but, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, but it was – it was. I was so convinced. Um, it was. I knew what the cigar was, and it wasn't. In fact, I didn't even have the wrapper right. Um, um, basically – on Blind Man's Puff, this thing came out to be a 92. Um, and if I was scoring this cigar, it probably would be like an 88. Mm-hmm. So I, I kind of, I'm still trying to fit. I didn't, it, it wasn't a bad cigar. Uh, what was, was your you Stogie know, Geeks rating on it? Was it a tri one or a fiver? I, I gave it a fiver. Okay. Um, it wasn't a bad cigar, but again, 90, when I start going up to 92, you're in the box worthy category. Yeah, it wasn't yeah, a yeah. box. It wasn't a box worthy cigar by any means. It's got a, um, it's got a little bit of a high price point of ten fifty, and it's a San Andreas Maduro wrapper uh, over Nicaraguan tobacco. Um, it's, it had the problem with I had when I okay because I smoked this before, and it had some of that Mexican tobacco sharpness from what I remember, and either the cigar mellowed out more this time, and it was better. It's possible that this was just a better cigar than when I smoked it. Or I was so convinced in my head it was this other cigar, which I know I love, mm-hmm. that that it was playing. I can't say, but it's your, so your mind is playing tricks on you with these blind cigars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was, I was so sure I took that other cigar and I put it next to this, right? Mm. And that other cigar does not have a San Andreas wrapper. Mm. That's how, and it was the same size and everything. So I was like, interesting. And so I think, like you, I think when you do these blind reviews, 
things come into your head, the power yeah. of suggestion, or the other way around when you smoke a banded cigar, the power of suggestion exactly. can come to come into this. Like I said, it wasn't a bad cigar. Um, I, like I, said, I just remembered it being a little harsher, but I had it at the trade show, so it's possible it did get better. I just, even when I smoked it with Blind Man's Pup, I was shocked how it came out to be a 92. It probably would have came out to be an 88 when I smoked it. Mm. Interesting. Yep. We do blind reviews. Take the bands of the cigar, send them right. to each other, and Smoke so we them. don't know what it is. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty fun. Yeah. Um, so Matt, what cigars do you, you said you have a humidor at home. Like what cigars do you like to, do you so have like I, a local cigar shop you go to? Yeah, there's a, there's a couple local cigar shops in, in Colorado that I go to and I'm a Robusto fan. I like something a little heavier and, mm -hmm. and, uh, so typically it's Robustos in, in my, um, my humidor. I, I'm an amateur, right? I don't. At the same level you guys are, I'm, I'm nowhere close. You're a total right? nerd. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know if it's what tobacco's in it. Most of them are either going to be Dominican Republic or, mm -hmm. or Nicaraguan for me. And, uh, you know, I like the flavor. I like something that's got a, – it's a little heavier, a little deeper. I don't smoke them very often, mm -hmm. right? So I don't I, was that four or five today? I, I lost track. Yeah, that's so did I. Yeah. So right. So <laughs> just so you, you know, know we've Matt, been, we've Matt been going. And I, we, I ended the day will with the Padron fiftieth, fiftieth. Did I say that right? Fiftieth. 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 Yeah. And I'm smoking the natural. And Matt's smoking the Maduro. Yeah. I thought that was a good way to end the cigar, end the day. Yeah. The cigar smoking day. So that was your cigar of the year, wasn't it? Yeah, there was a natural. Yeah. Natural. Yeah. Yeah, this cigar is awesome. I mean, this uh, is can't. like yeah, it's hard epic, to top that. epic way to. This yeah. is my kind of cigar, right? Yeah, you yeah. Maduro is probably more in your flavor profile yeah. from what you were saying, right? Exactly, in yeah. and, and very close to the the robusto, right? In, it in is. Yeah, it's, it's it's a little larger robusto. When I yeah. smoke a couple of these, my throat's completely done for the day. Yeah, right? oh, yeah, that's right? got some weight right. to it. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. and and so this is my style cigar, but. It's been a nice graduation throughout the day. We we started m more mild. mild and kind of worked our way up to this. And, yeah. And you know I can I can do this, but uh, yeah. So I started with that Leon Jimenez will, and then we went to a La Aurora Preferidos Lancero. They have something a little little more punch oh, to wow. it. And then after that, in the previous show, I did. Um, I didn't want to like do another large cigar, right? So we did a Davidoff Short Corona Nicaraguan. And oh, I love that cigar. That that might have been what Matt and I were like, this is like the best cigar we smoked yeah, all day. Right, exactly. That, yeah. Dude, that cigar, like, it produces flavor. Like, unbelievable. And really. that little Corona, I mean, wow. It's I, I, that's one of the best short Coronas I've ever had. Isn't it, though? It's uh, it's yeah. unbelievable. Yeah, so we yeah. we visited Davidoff. I mean, that's a yep. Nicaraguan offering. That's got a little more strength, but tons of flavor. Yeah. Tons of flavor. Yep. And then we went to a, a 1926 number six, the Robusto and the Natural. Oh my goodness! Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. We had an epic cigar day, dude. <laughs> yeah, we did. Oh yeah, goodness. and so, but that one had a lot of spice, right? A and lot if of you spice. Noticed, that was that was like because I wanted to wake up your senses, right? Like we went, did pretty mild, yeah. but um, and we it, were drinking some cocktails, and right. I wanted you to really I mean, kind of get the, the we're, yeah. We're, we're doing the uh, sidecars, old and fashions, and the sidecar. So the spice with the liquor that we were having at the time, I thought that was a good. It was a good balance. Yeah, definitely a good balance. This is a. And then and I ended very with the good way to yeah, finish the I night. had to end with something really epic. So yeah. that's kind of so it will epic cigar day. Wow. For uh, us. It's great. I mean, I'll I'll get you back tomorrow with my day. Yeah, it'll be yeah, yeah. awesome. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> um so I smoked a, a Monte Cristo Espada Robusto. Did you see this in the show notes, Will? Yes. Uh, did, I think I sent I may have sent you that one. Do I'm you not have sure. I, I bought this one at Corona, I think. Oh, okay. Did you send me another one of these? I may have I reviewed it in a different size. I might have sent it in a different size. Okay. I like this size better. Which size? Uh, I smoked the Robusto. Yes. The and Robusto I gave it a was probably the best size. Yeah, because when it, it started off um, kind of like a mild but very flavorful and then kind of got a little deeper, richer as you went through it. Um, but I really like the size a lot better. This is like a $10 cigar at that size. I thought um, they did a nice, a nice job with this blend. I think that's a good – I think they did a very nice job with that blend. Um, I'd probably go between Fiverr. Maybe there's well, that one I go closer to the box, but but, it, but it's a very good – it's a very good cigar. 
I mean, it's probably one of the better yeah. cigars that come out of Altadas in the last year or so. Yeah, and in this smaller Robusto size, size too. Yeah, the smaller Robusto size. size did it for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the smoke length is kind of ideal. Robustos, right? I think you're right, Matt. For like, you know, average cigar smoker, they tend to gravitate towards the Robusto. Yeah. It, it produces a lot more smoke than a Corona or a Lancero. Right. As you you smoked a Corona and a Lancero today, right? Right. right. But the Robusto, it, it kind of lets you know you're smoking a cigar. Yeah, yeah. and in, in the the window short enough that it's a great kind of uh, social thing. You know, right. I I smoke the the prime time we smoke is Christmas time. We mm-hmm. get all the guys together. We go out. We smoke. It's cold as shit. It's probably pretty in, cold in, in Colorado, yeah. right? <laughs> and so you don't want to be out there smoking for an hour, for, yeah, right? Exactly. So you're looking for something that's in that half an hour to 40 minute, minute range, yeah, yeah, range yeah. right? Yeah. Where you're getting a good smoke, you're getting good camaraderie, but damn it, it's cold. It's you gotta cold. Get back you gotta go back inside. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. just it's perfect time for the ladies to get. All the dishes done after dinner. <laughs> hey, I'm dead serious, right? <laughs> that's that's what my wife's big thing. She's like, take the boys out, go, go away out for a little while. Yeah, get your smoke. Not too long. Mm-hmm. They got plenty of time to clean up the table. Then we come back in. Then Have it's dessert, dessert and yeah. after dinner right, drinks right. and that kind of stuff. That robusto is a perfect size for that. Yeah, and it that's is. why that's I it. enjoy it. Yeah, it is. No, yeah, it's funny. Paul, do we want to take a quick break? Yeah, let's take a quick break and come back. Okay. Okay. Oh, wait. Chris is making his way back to the boards, so we need to stall time until Chris can get back. You, yeah, because I, lo- I have a long one coming up. That's okay. why. Yeah, yeah, my next that's is a good. Long one. Yeah, I've got one yeah. I want to talk about, too. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to take a short break, come back, and continue the Stogies of the Week. <laughs> 